Hey, hey everyone, how's it going? It's Stephen from The Arm Gamer, and with me today is Seth King, who helps staff the GXL. The GXL is a massive LAN party that happened over the weekend. Um, it was approximately a 500-man LAN, and Seth, you, what, what was your role in uh, helping organize the event? Uh, well, my role actually evolved very quickly once the GXL got underway. Originally, I was... I'm just going to be there as a tournament admin and manage about six or seven games throughout the GXL. Um, but due to the size of both the Sevo TF2 and the uh, EXTV TF2 tournaments, everything got very out of hand. And our original uh, tournament admin, uh, Nicholas the Fragile Leon, <laughs> he was very uh, overwhelmed mm -hmm. with the, particularly the TF2. Uh, I think we had like 26 teams for TF2. Um, so he was very overwhelmed with that, and I had to kind of step in and take the take up the reins as the tournament admin. So I went from just managing about seven games to managing every single tournament that we had at the GXL, which is around 30 or so, or around 30 tournaments. Yeah, and that's quite a bit. And uh, the T the TF2 tournament that was, I think, what the largest on the East Coast or North America or something like that. Uh, yeah, I believe it was the largest uh, showing up for a TF2, the largest amount of people showing up for a TF2 tournament uh, in North America. Maybe even North America, Europe. I'm not too certain, but North America for sure. Mm -hmm. And what was the biggest challenge for you in organizing those 30 tournaments? <laughs> um, it's definitely a culmination of trying to keep everybody on track. Like both the admins that are working under me the players that are participating in the tournaments, and then managing the time uh, slots for each tournament. Managing those three things, are it's very, very difficult because there's going to be people that want to participate in multiple tournaments that might be occurring at the same time, mm -hmm. or maybe they want to participate in one that's... Maybe they're, uh, for, for instance, they want to participate in Super Smash Bros. Melee and Trackmania, but they're going on at the same time because we're a little bit behind schedule. And because we're behind schedule, I don't want to say, no, you can't do this, because originally they should be able to do that. So it's really a, a, a matter of trying to k stay on track as much as possible while still appealing or appeasing all of the players. It's a very difficult thing to do, especially when you have 500 people at a LAN. Right. And now you've been doing the uh, GXL for the past seven years and staffing for what the past two, correct? Yes, that is correct. Other than scope, what would you say is like the biggest difference between then and now? Um, it's certainly, certainly just the structure of it. It, despite the fact that this year we still had um, problems with times lining up properly for the tournaments. Um, and of course, we there's always going to be some miscommunication, and sometimes the players don't show up for their thing for their the, what they're supposed to play in. Mm -hmm. um, it's just still just more well structured. <laughs> in the past, it's been really all over the place. Uh, this year, it was a lot more concise, and it certainly went a lot smoother. Even though we did have some hiccups, it was still very well executed. I think. Right, and uh, going from, you know, go going from uh, there, like, where where do you see the GXL going from here? Like, do you think it's going to be continue to be as well structured, or, you know, do you think that there's going to kind of reach a maximum size that the GXL can be, and is this it? Um, I certainly don't think that we've hit anywhere near maximum capacity. In the past, we've had lands larger than five hundred people. Mm -hmm. I believe the one year, this was years ago, we had 700 or so. Um, so we definitely are able to handle more than what we just had. Mm -hmm. So we certainly aren't going to stop here. And each time that we do something like this, obviously we just learn more and more about what to do and what not to do. Um, so for instance we're certainly going to book a larger hall <laughs> for next year because we started to get a little bit crammed in there once mm -hmm. everyone had arrived, which was about Saturday morning, I think we had. 
um, the maximum amount of people that we had booked. And of course, we still had additional spectators showing up. Um, so the particularly around the CSGO tournament during the finals with Cloud9 and I and I by power playing against each other, the rows were very crowded with spectators, you know, trying to watch the players as they played. And, you know, they didn't really want to, when you're at a live event like that, if you can get behind the players and watch them uh, mm -hmm. and really see what they're doing in real time, that's so much better than being on a monitor. So I can't fault people for doing that, but we just got really, really crowded. So we're definitely going to be taking the main hall next year, which is Hall A at the uh, Expo Center of Greater Philadelphia. That is about three times the size of the one that we're in, that mm -hmm. we were in. Um, and I'm very confident that we can fill that to capacity. So we'll see what happens next year because it should be bounds beyond what we had this year. All right, and speaking of those pro tournaments, Sivo and EXTV were streaming there, and like, what was it like knowing that uh, at one point you had fifty three thousand people watching that uh, watching something that you helped set up? Um, well, that's that is just uh, completely and utterly amazing uh, to me. Fifty three thousand people watching us live is just that's just awesome numbers, and it's a hell of a lot of publicity for the land itself. Um, so really. Big thanks to Sivo and EXTV for plugging the GXL. I really hope that out of those 53,000 viewers, we get at least a fraction of them wanting to come to the GXL. I mean, we've had people travel internationally before mm -hmm. for the GXL. If I recall two years ago, or uh, not two years ago, but two lands ago, we had people from Norway oh, uh, wow. that traveled out to attend the LAN. Mm -hmm. So... Getting a draw like that, I mean, I think this year the furthest that we had was Ontario, so they drove nine hours to land with us. Oh. And that's just for regular players. We did have international teams come across uh, from Europe for mm -hmm. the TF2 tournament. Um, but just for the BYOC players that just want to go and you know play in tournaments, maybe we'll go home with some prizes, it's amazing to see people come from across the globe for this sort of thing. So I'm really hoping that because of that viewership that we garnered, that will get just a more diverse um, crowd at the next LAN. And it's, it's interesting to me that you mentioned how far people would travel. Like, what do you think makes the GXL so special that, you're, you know, that you inspire people to travel out that far for you know, computer gaming? Well, I think that the thing, I guess this really comes down to the GXL versus other major LANs. Um, the biggest one coming to mind would be DreamHack. Uh, I mean, there's some other ones across the West Coast and whatnot. But I think the thing that really sets the GXL apart from a lot of other lands is that it's entirely about having fun. Mm -hmm. um, like, we have the pro tournaments. Yeah, it's great. There's cash prizes. You can win some awesome stuff. But at the end of the day, all that we as the staff and organizers care about is that our attendees had a good time. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter if you came and you played in every single tournament uh, and you didn't win anything or if you came and you didn't play in any tournaments. As long as you had fun, then we're doing our jobs right and we're happy. And I think a lot of other lands get really kind of tied up in the we want to push esports and we want everything to be very official um, and this is how we're going to have it structured and whatnot what we say goes. With GXL, we're, we're very flexible. If somebody's not having a good time and there's something that we can do to fix it, we're absolutely going to do that. I mean, I, I believe, and we just love doing silly things. I mean, the frozen underwear run, uh, <laughs> which I do believe you participated in. I did. Oh, so <laughs> many bad memories from that. It was cold and inside me. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we have we have you know little mini games like that, the wing eating contest. Mm -hmm. um, we just love to do silly things like that because not only is it fun for the participants, but it's fun for everybody else at the land to watch these sort of things happen. Um, so that's just what we're all about. We're not afraid to goof off, uh, to to get our hands dirty, to swear a little bit in front of the crowd. Uh, to get them riled up and get them excited to win some prizes. I, I, I really do think that it's just our laid-back attitude um, and our willingness to have fun. 
And, well, you, you kind of touched on this in your answer. And, uh, one thing I was wondering, I, I, I was talking to Kyle Turk earlier, and he kept mentioning, mentioning how the GXL focused on the community and how it's not only driven by the community, but it wants to help drive the community to help gaming get better. And, well, one thing I'm wondering is, like, what makes the GXL community so special in your mind? The GXL community is really... Like, once you've been, like, you, you go to a GXL and you learn who a few people are. You go to another GXL and you see those people again, and then suddenly you're family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like, I know so many people that I only see at the GXL, and I feel so close to them, and I can talk to them and, and just talk nonsense with them as much as, I, as much as I want and not feel uncomfortable about it at all. You're all there for the same reason, and it's just a lot of fun to have that much in common with somebody who you might have just met or you met the year before and then you just feel so close to them already um, you know a lot of the guys uh, particularly the guys that came down from Ontario uh, I believe it's like breakneck murder squad those guys are there all the time uh, there's a lot of other re recur recurring faces and they're just awesome people to hang out with and I look forward to like almost re-meeting them every single year. It's just a great time. Okay, and... Well, you, you've been attending the GXL for seven years, you said earlier. Uh, what would you say is your favorite story from, you know, any of those events? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, this is a really hard one. Yeah, oh, well, um, I'm sure. But I guess I'll defer back to... Uh, the the one PC case smashing competition that we had. This was back when I believe we were holding at the Millville Rescue Squad here in South Jersey, about 15 minutes away from where I live, which was extra nice because I didn't have to sleep at the venue. I could just come home, take a hot shower. But uh, anyway, I digress. Um, probably the PC casing, the PC case smashing competition, because it was Uzi, <laughs> the one guy Uzi he took to it with a sledgehammer mm -hmm. and the case had a glass siding to it and he smashed directly through the glass and left a giant gaping hole in the floor <laughs> at the rescue squad which the GXL staff wasn't terribly happy about because they ended up having to pay for the floor repairs um, but for everybody else watching it was pretty freaking hilarious so I kind of have to say that would be my one of my favorite memories. All right, and what what's something you'd like to see in future LAN events? Like, if your ideal world next year there's a GXL, what what more would you like to see from it? Um, I mean, larger turnout is always going to be one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know, we can never get too big. I don't think we definitely can expand five hundred. I think that we could handle around a thousand people um, with the right location preparation so if we get that uh, that larger hall I think that uh, that would be awesome but my biggest desire for the next land would be a League of Legends land tournament which requires the participation and addition of Riot Games mm -hmm. and I think that it is a very big possibility particularly with how successful the SIVO and EXTV tournaments went this at this last land. I think that's really going to speak volumes about what we're able to handle, mm -hmm. uh, and, and especially with the partnerships that we established. Uh, Corsair was a major sponsor of the TF2 tournament. They said, sent us a lot of awesome things to give away to the players. So I think that being able to show that uh, on our, our, quote, resume will really do well for us to get more involvement. And like I said, Riot Games, if I could get them on board for a League of Legends tournament, that would be an enormous draw. I'm very confident that a League of Legends land alone, I could bring in a few thousand people that would want to land. Okay, and you know, I just I've been asking everyone this as a generic ending question, but why land? Like when we have internet and I can just hop on Xbox Live or Steam and play with my friends already, or even with strangers already, like. Why bother going to a land that's going to be filled with 500 sweaty, B.O.-infested people? Well, the B.O. is definitely... That's definitely a, a, a downside to the land <laughs> aspect. 
But the the biggest thing about going to lands and what really makes it magical is just the entire environment. Like I said before, you really you really are a part of a family with these people once you once you start talking to them and you see them at multiple events you become so close you meet you make so many friends that you wouldn't be able to make um normally if you were just playing online additionally there's nothing quite like sitting in the same room uh as people participating in a tournament and then just fragging somebody and yelling at the top of your lungs across the room at them and then you know that they heard you and then they yell right back at you <laughs> it's just it's you you can never get that hype with mm -hmm. an online event mm -hmm. um you know if i were to host a csgo tournament online it's not going to be nearly as fun as having a csgo tournament in-house we had a 48 man arms race tournament for csgo this year which was i believe our highest tournament sign up mm -hmm. um outside of the pro tournaments for csgo and tf2 and once that went off we had two two super matches of 24 in each. Once that went off, it was just nonstop yelling. Every single time somebody got the lead or got on the knife level, people were yelling across the <laughs> event. You could just tell who was playing what and who was who because you, you would be watching the spectator and you'd see that somebody gets on the knife level and then you'd hear them yelling across the room. Like that sort of environment you just can't get without mm. being at a LAN. And it's it's so much fun. If you've never been to a LAN before do it like just go to one find one that's near you or host your own by all means um we at the gxl we would love to have more competition um because at the end of the day that gives us lands to go to and then we can see what other lands are doing and then learn from them and then just grow and become even better ourselves mm -hmm. um so if you haven't been to one please you are doing yourself a disservice by not attending a land all right, well, thank you for calling. Um, again, everyone, I'm Sean from The Arm Gamer, and I've been talking to Seth King. If you're at all interested in him, you can check him out on twitch.tv slash Achilleos. That's going to be linked down in below. Is it Achilleos or Achilleos? Achilleos. Achilleos. Okay, Achilleos. That's Achilles. Gonna... Right, right. Okay, so that's going to be linked down in the video below. Uh, also, there are going to be links for the GXL, articles about the GXL. Make sure to check it out. Please, I'm going to probably be at the next one. You all should be too. Uh, Seth, thank you so much for calling in. Um, no I wish you guys luck in the future. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me.